Western Canada is carved by rivers whose headwaters begin in mountain glaciers, whose reputations have been made by the firs born on them, the cities built beside them, or the distant ports reachable by them. The Battle River can claim none of this. It flows from a small lake in the west central Alberta parkland and eventually into an oversized valley hollowed in a geological instant, whose broad floor it can only occupy respectfully by means of looping oxbows. The river relies on whatever rain trickles down a thousand creeks to sustain itself after spring runoff. To look upon the Battle River from the angle of the water itself, from a canoe, is to imagine that you are the first to come this way having found a secret passage through a familiar place. It is to stop paddling while a deer swims across the river in front of your bow and emerges, thin and muscular, to climb the opposite bank. It is to learn the lie in hardened dichotomies like wild and domesticated, watching coyotes weave through a herd of cattle grazing in the flats, or tracing the eastward spread of maples from the abandoned farm around which evidently they were first planted. It is to hear intimations of an antiquarian quiet. It is to understand why the Cree word for river, sippy, is an animate noun. It is to collect a Chaucer-esque pilgrimage of ducks, shorebirds, even a hawk. It is to be entertained, distracted, by orange-tufted grebes skittering left, right, left across your path, as if on the two-dimensional track of a carnival shooting gallery. It is to accept the leadership of a heron, perhaps several, waiting stick-like around every bend, unfolding angular prehistoric wings to keep a comfortable distance and lift mockingly over the narrows of an oxbow that will take 20 minutes to paddle. It is to glimpse a heron rookery in the tops of the tallest aspens. It is to wonder at nature's diversity, pockets of spruce, cactus-studded badlands, and on the sun-facing side, grass, thin as threadbare cloth through which pale brown knees shine. The battle is insignificant by measures that judge a river by where it is going and by its power and sweep in getting there. Its appeal is not linear at all. Like the Jordan, it is a river defined by what it separates and what it joins, by what life it draws to itself and what life it releases.